Hello YouTube, this is Douglas, and I'm very excited to be sharing with you my new terrain generation system that I've spent the last three weeks working on. The new terrain generation pipeline is much more efficient and customizable than my previous solution. It runs on the GPU, allows users to compose math and common noise functions, and even load voxel models in order to create detailed 3D terrain. Specifically, I will be showcasing how the pipeline is set up, talking about how I use interval arithmetic in order to skip processing of homogeneous regions, and I'll be explaining how the 3D models are loaded onto the GPU. So without further ado, let's jump right in. As a bit of background, I'm building a voxel game engine. The goal is to create a fully editable environment in which users can build and interact. Part of voxel engine development involves actually creating that 3D world, and that is where the terrain generation system comes into play. The terrain generation system takes chunks of the world which have not yet been loaded and assigns a value to each voxel in the region. My previous terrain generation system did this on the CPU, and I had the whole system set up to be multi-threaded, so it was fairly fast, but it had a number of drawbacks. For one thing, even though the system was multi-threaded, it was still taking processing power away from the CPU. The threads that were busy churning through new chunks of data could have been dedicated to doing some other task. Another big drawback was that things were hard-coded. I would compile the program and then ship it, and the terrain generation pipeline would be unchangeable after that. So if a user wanted to go in and tweak terrain generation somehow, that would be impossible because the terrain generation system was all written in code. And that was a big problem because I wanted terrain generation to be a, a dynamic thing. I'm building an engine after all. So I decided to do something completely different. The first step that I took was to represent terrain generation pipelines as data. In the new system, a terrain generator is a list of these operations. Each of these operations is a low-level instruction to, for example, add a vector, or multiply two vectors, or maybe generate a random number. And these instructions are strung together to form a low-level bytecode format the terrain generation bytecode can easily be serialized or modified at runtime, meaning that it's simple to create new terrain generators. This list of instructions is then converted into a shader, code which can be run on the GPU. I do this by defining a text-based snippet for each operation, and I just cobble the shader text for all of the operations in the list together to form a shader. I make two shaders, in fact but more on that later. Once the shader source is compiled into compute shaders, I can send data to the GPU where it will generate terrain for me. The data is read back to the CPU and assembled into octrees, which can be used by the rest of my engine. This is blazingly fast. I'm also stoked about the way that the low-level instruction bytecode turned out because it's a very versatile format. In the future, I hope to create some kind of node editor, or even perhaps programming language front-end, that can compile back to the shader bytecode, which will make it easy for end users to create their own terrain generation pipelines. So the code is very optimized and very efficient. And that brings me to the sponsor of today's video, Code Crafters. If you're like me, you're always seeking to improve your programming expertise and build more efficient, more complex pieces of software. Code Crafters is an educational website built by experienced developers for experienced developers. Unlike other coding websites, which just have short challenges, Code Crafters guides you through comprehensive projects where you build real world software like Docker or SQLite. These projects are a great way to improve your coding skills both for work and for hobby projects. I have personally been going through their Zig tutorial and have very much been enjoying learning the nuances of the language. 
Use the link in the description to get started for free today. And get 40% off if you upgrade to a paid subscription within three days. Even though the GPU is fast, I want my voxel worlds to be big. I mean, really big. And so if there were a way to skip processing certain sections of the world, that would be ideal. In fact, there is, and it rests on a beautiful mathematical topic called interval arithmetic. The idea goes like this. Consider some terrain generation pipeline. The pipeline takes in a real number, the position of the voxel, and spits out some other real number. We then assign a material value to the voxel at that point, depending upon the value of that output number. Say, if it's greater than zero, we assign air, whereas if it's less than or equal to zero, we assign dirt. To generate an entire world in this way, we need to sample every single voxel that we want to process. But for many mathematical functions, we can predict the range in which the output will fall if we know the range of the input. For example, consider the function 2x. If we know that our input is some number between 10 and 20, then we know that our output will be somewhere between 20 and 40, because 2x is a monotonically increasing function. In the same vein, consider the function e to the x and the interval ab. The output of this function along ab will just be e to the a and e to the b. And we can generalize this to a great variety of functions, and even logical operations like and, or, and if. So going back to our original terrain generation example, if we took the function to be 2x and we were on the interval 10 to 20, we know that our output would be 20 to 40, and in all cases that is greater than zero. So we could just assign all of the voxels in the range 10 to 20 to be air, because we said earlier that our voxel would be air if our function was greater than zero and dirt otherwise. And this is exactly the system that I have implemented in my terrain generation code. This is why my terrain generation pipeline creates two shaders in reality. There's one, which is the interval arithmetic version, and there's another, which I call the fine version, which just samples one fine voxel at a time. To get a visual for what this looks like, here's a clip from when there was a bug in my code, so the fine shader wasn't running, and you can see that all of these um, 16 by 16 by 16 blocks here are completely homogenous. So these are the blocks that the terrain generator skipped processing one voxel at a time for, because it was able to predict in advance that these regions would be totally homogenous. And this saves a huge amount of processing time on the GPU, since there are lots of chunks in the sky and below the ground that are just purely air or purely stone. It was a complex process and took a fair amount of elbow grease, but in the end, the results have been nothing short of astounding. Even for the surface level chunks that you see, with trees and rocks and grass in them, no more than 50% of the voxels are typically processed, and usually it's closer to something like 20 or 30%. Now, in the previous segment, I talked in detail about interval arithmetic, but I did not explain how it worked in the case of 3D models. The trees that you see in the current scene are not being generated purely by functions on the GPU. They are voxel models that were loaded in advance and then are being placed into the scene, which means that it's not possible to use just mathematics alone to predict what the output of sampling a region of that 3D model might be. The issue that we need to be able to overcome fundamentally is we need to be able to take a 3D texture and determine whether some cubic region or rectangular region of that 3D texture is all the same value. To do this, I turned to a technique that I've discussed in a previous video, distance fields. Although they may be defined in a number of ways, a 3D distance field takes in a voxel at a particular position, and it gives you the distance to the nearest voxel that is of a different value. And this is exactly what we want. We can pre-compute a distance field 
for our model. And then when it comes time to sample some region, some 3D bounding box, to determine whether everything inside it has the same material, we just take the distance field at its minimum corner. If the distance field is larger than the side length of our box, then we know that we can safely conclude all of the voxels in the box have the same value, the value at the minimum corner. Otherwise, we will need to sample every voxel in the box individually. To apply this to terrain generation pipelines, I just generate a lower quality version of the voxel model by downscaling it 16 times. This is because distance fields are relatively slow to compute, so it's quicker to use a lower resolution version. I run a distance field generation algorithm on that lower resolution version of the voxel model. And then the voxel model, both high res and low res, are uploaded as a 3D texture. And there is some additional stuff that goes on there. I pack the voxel octree so that homogeneous regions are not stored at, on the GPU at all, saving memory. But the core idea is that the distance field is stored on the GPU. So during the interval arithmetic pass, if I ever need to sample some kind of voxel volume, I can do it in this way and often skip processing homogeneous regions of voxels. Putting it all together, we get a system that is both flexible and performant. If you enjoyed hearing about the nuances of terrain generation, please leave a like and perhaps a comment down below. Don't forget to use the link in the description to check out Code Crafters, and I will see you all in the next episode.